This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And welcome on to the Open Align Show. Welcome back, really. Team number 6328, Mechanical Advantage, coming out of Massachusetts. Uh, week four updates here on the Open Alliance Show. And this team was on in week one, and uh, their progress has been absolutely incredible uh, so far. Lots to cover. Today we'll be showing off uh, their latest CAD progress, uh, showing off uh, uh, some of their scouting app and some programming that's gone into uh, everything for Mechanical Advantage as well. So, guys, welcome back. Uh, I know we got one new face here, so why don't you just all uh, reintroduce yourselves, let us know what you do on the team again, and we'll hop right into your progress. I'm Mantan, I'm the scouting systems lead. I'm Ariad, I'm one of the captains on the team. I'm Jonah, software lead. Uh, I'm Matthew, I'm the CAD lead. So as you guys are going into uh, week four, or really week five, week four is completed now for this. Uh, as, as I mentioned, we're going to check out your CAD. And uh, I was looking at your robot uh, so far and where it's been for CAD work. And, and this looks to be a really solid machine. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit more about this and some of your progress? Yeah, so this year we kind of we decided on the double jointed arm. We kind of decided we wanted to go with just one intake this year for and have the cone and cube the cone auger and the cube auger in, in one prototype. But after we analyzed that, we kind of realized that that wouldn't fit in our current like frame firmware and stuff like that. So we split it up into two. And then for that, we also realized we would then need to pass through it, it ourselves. So that kind of influenced our design here and how our arm is able to pass through itself in the dual intakes for both game pieces. This this robot is wild and it's it's so cool and there's so much going on. Um, so why don't you um, tell us about the, the things that you want to highlight um, now, now that we're five weeks into build season? Okay. Um, well, so the, the robot design with the double jointed arm is a little bit crazy, which also means the software is a little bit crazy. Um, so for the double jointed arm, one of the things that's complicated about this is that the movement of one joint will affect how you have to move the other joint. So it, it gets a little bit tricky. And we're using a feed forward model from team 449 to do the feed forward calculation. So that's essentially converting uh, based on target positions, velocities, accelerations of the joints. Calculate we, we can calculate the theoretical voltages of the joints. And you can go in reverse. So based on an applied voltage in simulation, we can determine how the arm would have moved realistically. Um, so we can test against that sort of physically accurate simulation. Um, with all of that groundwork set, the real challenge comes with how do we actually maneuver the arm as quickly as possible? Because we have to deal with, uh, there's a lot of stuff we would rather the arm not hit, like slamming into the intakes, for example, um, or hitting the nodes. So in order to make sure that we're getting from point A to point B as fast as possible, the technique that we decided on using is called numerical optimization. So instead of simply plotting a trajectory like a path in XY space, in 2D space, um, like that, that's optimizing for the smoothness of the path, which for a double jointed arm is not necessarily the fastest way to get from A to B. So numerical optimization is essentially a generic set of techniques where we can define a problem, like get between these points as fast as possible, and constraints, like don't apply more than 10 volts to the motors, calculated based on the feed forward model. Um, and so what we're actually doing is we have orange pies that are on the robot uh, that we had anyway for doing vision processing. And those are serving double duty running this numerical optimization algorithm. So, so the Rio will decide, I need to get the arm to this position. It sends that request off to the orange pies they will run this algorithm. They'll figure out the optimal path for the arm to take, taking, uh, predicting what voltage we'll have to apply at every point along that path, looking at the momentum of the arm, at the position of the wrist, all of that. 
and then they will send that result back to the Rio so that we can follow that path uh, as accurately as possible. There's also a little bit of fanciness as we're following because we want to avoid hitting the intakes, um, which happen to be positioned directly in the optimal path of the arm. So for now, we have a, a relatively simple system where we're looking at whether the wrist, when the wrist enters uh, avoidance regions around each of the intakes or when it is uh, about to in the course of its trajectory. And we swing the intakes out of the way just in time. So a lot of the, the driver controls will ultimately be moving between these presets uh, with the numerically optimized time optimal trajectories. How many presets have you programmed so far? Like, what are you looking at doing? What's that full scope look like? Uh, well, so right now we're mostly doing uh, like test positions. We're in the process of putting together our driver controls that will involve the full set of presets. One of the interesting things about that actually is because we can pass through ourselves, we have a mirrored set of presets on both sides of the robot. Like we can pick up from the substation or score on the nodes from either side. So our current plan is that we're going to have the, the software figure out for a lot of those cases, which side is closest to the substation or closest to the node and automatically pivot in the right direction and choose the correct preset, all of that. So how, where are you at right now with, with such a complicated software system? Where are you at right now in terms of your entire build and like practically bringing this together? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a whole robot that's like ready to go that you're deploying software on, or are you still working on this in pieces? Um, so right now we're prioritizing prototyping and simulation. Ultimately, uh, the whole robot system with the intakes and the, the arm is complex enough that we really need to be, at this point, testing. The, we need to test how all of those pieces interact, which at this point, the only practical way to do that is in simulation, which is why we've dedicated uh, so much effort to that. Because if we know that all of this complex sequencing is going to work, then once we have a robot on hand uh, and we're bringing up individual systems, we're just focusing on doing the like individual tuning of joints, for example. Yeah, because I was going to ask about that. Like with, with a double jointed arm, and this is something that my team is seeing as well, is um, you're going to have mechanical backlash, right, mm -hmm. in all yeah. of these joints, right? And all these arms have like a little bit of springiness to them and mechanisms have momentum in the movement. So I'm curious how you're going to compensate for some of the mechanical looseness of the, of the robot as it's put together versus the simulation, which is totally perfect. Yeah. Well, so the main thing that we're doing is we're using uh, encoders on the endpoint of every joint. So uh, those are the rev through bore encoders that we're reading both absolute and relative position off of. So uh, even if there is some uh, backlash between the motor and the joint, we're going to always be reading position off of the end, end point of the joint. Uh, in terms of momentum, a lot of that will, uh, when the arm has momentum, we're going to be compensating for that in software using the feed forward model. Um, and ultimately, as for other springiness of the mechanism, for example, we'll have to uh, figure that out as it proves itself to be a problem or not be a problem. So we could be looking at things like acceleration limits on the joints or on the drivetrain. Uh, a lot of the times that the arm will be moving, the drivetrain will actually be under software control anyway. So that gives us more options for uh, limiting things as necessary. Got it. So with this, with this robot, has your uh, strategy of how you're going to play the game evolved at all from, from week one, how you broke down the game. You have a lot of flexibility with what you can do with this robot, but when you put the robot on the field, um, assuming everything's working perfectly, what do you think your robot is going to do? What, what, what role are you going to play on your alliance? Uh, I think the name of the game this year we thought was really fast cycles, um, which is why like we went with the small frame size as well. Um, so we can really like, you know, get, get to the double substation, get back to, uh, our community really quickly. Um, and we also, we really wanted to prioritize being able to score on both sides of the robot because we thought that was going to be really important. Um, just like the, the seconds that you save in the cycle time, um, if you're able to score on both sides of the robot and pick up on both sides of the robot, uh, we felt that was valuable as well. Uh, and then also going with the two intakes, as Matthew mentioned, 
Um, we thought, I know we mentioned this uh, when we were on here for the first time as well, said that having full with intakes was going to be incredibly valuable. And we, we still think that, um, so yeah, the strategy there has kind of driven a lot of our design choices. I just want to clarify your, your intakes are doing both cones and the cubes are coming through those, those intakes. So one, yeah. So we have two intakes, both are separate for each game piece. So we have one, the auger intake is for the cone. And then we have one, uh, roller intake for the cube. They're on opposite sides of the robot. Yeah, it makes sense. So like, you know, seeing on, on, on the screen in there, we can see, you know, obviously two completely different designs. Uh, for those as well. When you were looking at getting to that point of where your design was, like, did they start out the same or was the idea to always go two separate directions that way? No, that's not how we started. Um, we kind of developed these both separately. So we developed the auger co uh, cone intake first. Um, and then later on, we kind of thought, okay, how can we deal with the cube? And then that led to uh, the cube intake. So those kind of developed separately. And then we decided to, like, it's best to have both of them um, on the robot. And because of the way our arm is designed, we can have the handoff from both intakes into the arm on both sides of the robot. Um, so it like, is mechanically feasible to do two intakes on both sides. So we decided that that was the best way forward. Uh, that's a good segue, I think, into the arm on your table uh, right now there. Um, you want to tell us more about that progress and, and how it's been going for you so far? Yeah, so this is just a, a simple prototype. So. Last time we met, we had a quite large adjustable roller intake for the, the cubes and cones. So this is really what's going to be at the end of the arm as the end effector. Just We already know the orientation of the cones and cubes from the intake. So then we can pick it up with this into the arm and then control it and place it and score it with it. Looking at, uh, from your guys then, so I know this is prototype-wise, what's the final product going to look like then? Uh, is, is I know that there's a uh, CAD screenshot. Is this what the final product is currently going to look like? Um, it's been going to look something like that. that. That design has kind of been changing and evolving over time as we've been trying to get it as light as possible and as, light, as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of been figuring out how the wheels and the belts were configured and how, where the motor was mounted with and how it was put onto the arm. That way we can get it as light, simple, and that way we can score and move the arm around as fast as possible. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, this has been, this is amazing. Like, I, I cannot wait to see this thing uh, hit the field. Um, anything else that you got, you want to share um, about, about the team and the progress uh, at this point? Um, yeah. So we, we've also been hard at work developing our scouting experience. So, over the during the off season, we made a big switch to Svelte. It's a it's a framework similar to React. It's all component based, and uh, the switch to Svelte and also Tailwind C, uh, Tailwind CSS allows for rapid development of really nice and pretty UIs. Mm -hmm. We think this will improve sc the scouting experience. Scouts will look at this screen and feel nothing but joy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and something you may notice uh, different than we did last year it was last year we went with more of a visual layout trying to uh, emulate what was uh, like how scouts actually see the field but this year we opted for simplicity and function over the visual design because we realized that um, if you're trying to recreate what the scouts are seeing on the field depending on which alliance you're scouting and depending on which side of the field you're on um, the layout of the app actually changes and we wanted to keep everything consistent so that the idea is that scouts don't actually have to look down with muscle memory, they just know where everything is. Everything is the same place every time, no matter what alliance you're scouting or which side of the field you're on. Oh, I want to ask you guys on the uh, the second part here, the post game uh, area on this, is that you have a lot of these star ratings on here. How do you how do you train your scouts to get at least somewhat consistent in how they're uh, choosing what a star rating is? Yes. So um, this are we changed our post game quite a bit. It, it no longer looks like this. We have sliders instead to add a little bit more granularity in our ratings. But generally, we tr uh, the entire team gets trained on our scouting system. So they know what they're what we're looking for when they're putting in the data. So they, they, they know what a good robot is versus what a bad robot is. But we've also decided to add that extra granularity so that they're, they can uh, create a more informed decision. Yeah, and another thing I'll quickly add is we're looking into possibly doing some sort of sentiment analysis on our comments. Um, yeah, this is something that we're looking into currently. If we can 
not as like a hard you know measure of how good a team is but if you can at least have some sort of value like generally this team has good comments or generally this team has bad comments yeah. we think there's some merit to that awesome well mechanical advantage thank you so much for uh giving these updates once again we can't wait to see uh further progress uh as you keep going through so make sure you follow mechanical advantage uh they have an awesome uh chief delphi uh bill blog that you should definitely go check out on there and of course on the oa uh discord as well but guys wish you best of luck uh with your events coming up as well too and i uh, can't wait to check uh back in with you uh, later on especially during the competition season good luck this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors solidworks is free for first teams over 80 percent of u.s engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use solidworks to design great products solidworks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud go to solidworks.com first to register your team FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at first updates now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.